What's up Marvel Snappers? Welcome to another Math Breakdown. Today we're going to look at two cards that have a unique effect jumping out of the deck. It's a cool effect, but how often do they actually trigger? Let's take a look at some of the numbers to help us better evaluate them. We'll start with Angel, who has the effect when one of your cards is destroyed, this flies out of your deck to replace it. If you manage to trigger this effect, not only do you get 2 power for free, it actually thins your deck by one card, making you more likely to draw your better cards. Now in practice, it can definitely feel like Angel is a Quicksilver impersonator and will just not stay in the deck. When drawn, Angel is super underwhelming, as it now has no relevant ability. We can take a quick look at the cumulative odds of drawing Angel throughout a typical game. The odds start getting out of your favor very quickly. Already by turn 3 it's a coin flip. Now you're also not just against the odds of drawing Angel, but you actually need to destroy a card to trigger the effect. The only typical way to destroy one of your own cards by turn 2 is Carnage. We need to draw the Carnage, and then have to draw a card on turn 1 for the Carnage to destroy. These numbers assume there are only two 1 cost cards in the deck. Having more would increase the odds ever so slightly, but not enough to make this a likely scenario. Only a 14% chance to have everything work out for us on turn 2. Turn 3 is the sweet spot where it is actually much easier for our combo pieces to align. Now these numbers assume you have 3 3 cost or less destroy enablers such as Deathlock, Carnage, or Killmonger and 4 cards you would actually want to destroy, drawing one of them by turn 2. Each turn after this, the odds of drawing Angel go up, continuing to reduce the likelihood of this effect ever triggering. Switching over to M'Baku, who has the effect if this is in your deck at the end of the game, it jumps to a random location. This is even harder to trigger than Angel, as you cannot cause this to happen early. We are entirely reliant on not drawing M'Baku the entire game. The cumulative odds are the same for Angel, but the value we care about here is the odds to not draw it by turn 6, which is only 25%. A fun tweak to the calculations is M'Baku in a Thanos deck, who beefs up the size of the deck by adding 6 Infinity Stones. Now these numbers aren't quite accurate, as the stones draw cards, increasing the likelihood you end up drawing the M'Baku. Even ignoring that, the odds are still not great. Now there is one way to deal with a drawn M'Baku. Lockjaw provides a unique effect that actually allows us to put a card back into the deck. Lockjaw gives us a backup plan if we draw M'Baku, but for now we can calculate the odds to not draw or swap into M'Baku for the entire game. These numbers look at each turn in isolation, and remember, in order to get a Lockjaw swap on turn 3, we would also need to draw the typical zero cost card played alongside Lockjaw Wasp, which is only a 22.7% chance by turn 3. These probabilities combine to a total of 14.3% to not draw or swap into M'Baku from turns 3 to 6, and a total of 8.3% factoring turn 1 and turn 2 draws. Now this isn't the reason we play Lockjaw, but I thought the numbers were interesting. The reason we are looking at Lockjaw is because if we do draw M'Baku, we can shuffle it back into the deck. Again, the numbers in this table look at each turn in isolation. The odds of drawing M'Baku by turn 4 is 58.3%. If you then play it to Lockjaw's location, it will be back in the deck for turns 5 and 6. The combined odds of avoiding an unfavorable outcome is 30%. If M'Baku is drawn on turn 5 and played, we only need to look at the turn 6 row. If M'Baku is drawn or swapped on turn 6, there's a 0% chance to redraw or swap back into it, assuming a normal 6 turn game. M'Baku can be held for turn 6 to guarantee it triggers, although that would prevent you from playing a 6 cost card. Depending on what else is left in the deck, that may disrupt you having an even stronger turn. In closing, I want to go over my final thoughts on these cards. I do genuinely love their design but the odds are just so against you that they aren't generally worth it. 
Angel has more niche use cases, as when locations destroy cards for you, it becomes easier to trigger, and its trigger actually thins your deck, which is super beneficial. In Marvel Snap, drawing extra cards is very rare, and this is one of the only ways to do it, getting you closer to other better cards. If those locations are hot, meaning they're appearing more often, you have a greater chance of getting that value from it. Ultimately, I think these cards need a change to have them see proper play, even giving them plus one power if you draw them could be potentially enough. Time will tell if the devs end up giving these cards the buff they deserve. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you learned anything or if you disagree with anything from this video. Your feedback is always appreciated. If you have any other math related ideas you'd like to see explored, put those in the comments too. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I've been putting out tons of Marvel Snap videos and your engagement helps the channel grow. I'll see you in the next one.